if nothing else, this movie does, like so many of the last Pixar movies, such a great job with representation. I'm serious. I have not seen so many gingers in one movie since Deathly Hollows Part 2. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today, our movie in the middle is Turning Red. Turning Red is Pixar's newest film set in China about a young girl who attempts to live a normal life when her family's legacy of turning into red pandas finally meets her. It stars Rosalie Shang, Sandra Oh, and of course, James Hong is in there somewhere. Fun unrelated fact, I caught COVID. Or I guess COVID caught me. So, this video is being brought to you by Quarantine, and is incidentally why I sound like the way I do. Okay, starting off with the highs for the movie, the animation is once again super great. I actually didn't love what it looked like when I saw it in the trailers, because it didn't look up to the standard for me of like what the last couple Pixar movies have done um, in terms of its like photorealism, which is a whole thing in and of itself. But, you know, for me, I was like, okay, this looks kind of like Illumination sort of caricature-ish animation instead of what we normally get. But actually, it does work for the movie because it's supposed to be that way. It's actually on purpose that it's supposed to be sort of cartoonish. And it has this kind of Scott Pilgrim anime comic-like feel in terms of its editing and how characters look and react. So it is pretty cool, actually, the, the way that they took it, uh, especially for this kind of movie. I also did like the main character, May. She is the main character, so I guess you could say that she is the main character. <laughs> I didn't think I was gonna like her at first because she seemed so much. And she is, but it's cool because she actually, uh, I don't wanna say dials it back a little bit, but the, the, the more serious the movie gets, um, the quieter she gets. So I thought that was actually kind of interesting is that at a certain point, especially when she's surrounded by her family um, and her, her parental uh, pressure to, to be the best person that she can be, uh, which is pretty much the main theme of the movie, she gets like super quiet and not her own person versus when she's with her friends and she's like super fun and outgoing and rebellious sometimes. And so that, that was pretty cool. I actually end up really liking her because she she was grounded a little bit more than I think a lot of the other characters, which I'll get to in a second. And of course, because it's Pixar, there are some emotional moments as well. Not as many as I normally see in Pixar movies, but there were some pretty good ones, especially one towards the end with the dad. I, I think he was a great character as well, and they have this kind of heart-to-heart -heart later on, which I, I personally thought was the best part of the movie. Finally, um, like I was mentioning at the beginning, but for real this time, the representation is awesome. It's really, really cool still that we're doing other parts of the world in these Pixar movies and seeing these relatable, fun movies that are about other cultures. So it was cool to see all those little details. And kind of like Encanto, I got a lot of comments on uh, my review for that, that, you know, even if the, the story, the movie, whatever doesn't hold up, there were a lot of people that really loved that movie just because they felt seen. They were like, my family is like this, or I've seen this in my family. And so it was really cool to actually see those comments. And they had like long paragraphs about how so accurate Encanto was. So that's really, really cool. My big middle is that the plot and the stakes are okay. They're not really that big. They're kind of a smaller, like sort of like in Luca, which it seemed like it was going to be a big plot and big stakes. And then it kind of wasn't. Same thing here is that it feels like it's going to be big because, you know, she's a, a big red panda for a lot of the movie, and that seems kind of hard to overlook in regular life. But the plot itself and what the goals are and what her wants are and the stakes, I don't know, just didn't really grab me as much. Then again, it is a movie that is literally about being a teenager and coming into that part of your life and the things that are important to you then, which are not as important to you a lot of the times later on in your life. There obviously is still a lot of those needs, those deep needs that are very important throughout all of your life, but the, the specific goals, uh, specifically one about her trying to get to a boy band concert, it doesn't really grab me as much, but also like, you know, it's probably not meant for me to be as interested in. A lot of people were saying that the metaphor of the panda was a little bit confused, like they didn't know exactly what they wanted to do with it. But the thing is, is like when you're doing a metaphor, it's not always gonna match up like 
thing for thing, you know, with what happens in life versus in a movie, because in the movie, they still have a structure. They still have a plot that they have to make sense of. So obviously the panda here is definitely symbolic of puberty, especially in women, um, as well as just struggles of being a teenager, you know, with, with your family versus your friends. And so, you know, I think they did a, a pretty good job of, of linking all of those together with this, this one metaphor. Now for the lows. I mentioned that May and I think even the dad are a little bit more interesting and I liked them more than a lot of the other characters. And that's because most of the other characters for me were pretty annoying. A lot of them were okay. Uh, like her friends, they're okay, but they're, I don't know. I just didn't really care about them as much. Maybe at the end a little bit. They're also kind of like, I think the Despicable Me girls, girls just grown up. You don't love me! But the one that I could not stand is the mom, and it's completely on purpose. What bothers me is that they didn't really try to make her insufferable in a three-dimensional way. The whole point of her character is that she is this perfect, polished Asian woman because that's the way she had to be for her mom, May's grandmother, and so now she's projecting that onto her daughter. You know, okay, pretty good theme, great. The problem is, is, you know, they they throw like a tiny little detail about that in the middle, and then they try to make this one-dimensional Karen three-dimensional all the way at the end. And like, you obviously know that this is why the way she is, is because of her mother, May's grandmother, but she just feels so 1D the entire time. And all she is is, is annoying and honestly horrible. <laughs> she is just horrible. She's so... <sighs> she literally says, the Daisy Mart has just lost another customer. You think I own this business? So again, I don't have a problem with the fact that she's insufferable. I have a problem with the fact that that's basically all she is for all of the movie, and they don't have as much of, like, what makes her that way, or a lot of intrigue as to, you know, if she has other levels. They don't really get into any of that until, like, three quarters of the way into the movie. But I think... The biggest low I have is just what I've been saying about the last couple when I talked about Encanto and Luca is, honestly, I, I just, I'm not sure what it is. I just don't feel attachment to this movie, you know? And, and again, it's the weirdest thing because technically they're incredible. They have wonderful themes. They have all the things that Pixar movies and, you know, other Disney movies usually have, which the last couple of Disney and Pixar's, I'm just not feeling it. I just don't know what it is. I don't know if it's that the story just isn't there to back up these themes. I don't know if they're just, you know, not to be taken as seriously. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure. And, you know, I talked about this extensively in the Encanto review, so I won't really re-repeat re myself or anything, but I, I just, I can't put my finger on it. It just feels like they're kind of banging out new Pixar movies that have these really interesting premises but they're just so quick and 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 so regular feeling and I don't know I don't know why I, it's it's weird I cannot put my finger on it but I just don't really feel the way I do with past Pixar movies with these new ones I just don't feel that attached to it or feel like I need to watch them again or they have a lot of layers it's like the themes are there like they state these are good themes in the movie but I'm not really feeling them does anybody else feel that way? With this one specifically, it might also be the fact that things happen so quickly in this movie, it almost feels unnatural. Like, I think there's a scene that spans like four or five minutes of the movie from which May goes to her room, discovers that she kind of likes this boy, for some reason draws a million pictures of him instantly, and then her mom finds it, and then her mom takes her to, the, to that boy embarrasses her this is like in four minutes like it just went so quick and it was it almost felt like not natural not like the pacing was weird so overall i didn't hate turning red it's always a great way to start this i didn't hate turning red there's a lot to like about it it is very fun it's very quick paced uh it, it's great for kids and a lot of adults who feel these themes of like pressure from your parents um and then projecting that onto your kids it's got all those themes but again i just I don't really, I can't really feel it for me personally, but you know what? Leave in the comments below if, once again, that representation for you or any details from the themes, the, the culture, whatever in this movie hit you because 
chances are it just didn't hit me like it, you know, it did for a lot of other people, but it was really awesome to see those comments in my other reviews. So it's, it's really cool um, that people are getting uh, this, this validation and, you know, being seen in these, these really good movies. So if for nothing else, um, that's definitely a high, but for me, the story and the stakes and the characters just aren't backing it up as much these days. I'm going to give Turning Red a 2.5 out of 4. Well, guys, let me know what you thought of Turning Red in the comments below, and make sure to keep voting on the Subby Awards. If you need the link, it will be in the video I published previously, um, talking a little bit more about that and some of those details, and I'll have the link in the description below. So make sure to go vote, because I think it's going to be in about another week, and then I'm going to close it so I can start prepping for the awards. And as always, keep your hopes high, your stress low, and movies right in the middle. I'll see you guys later. You think I own Ikea? I'm a part-time employee halfway through a two-week notice. I don't give a shit.